Be sure to subscribe, keep pounding, underscore TV, the best Panther YouTuber ever. I'm rocking with the big cat. Pause up. Keep pounding. Hey, everybody. I'm your host, El Grande Gato, also known as the big cat. My cool cat, put your paws up if you're rocking with the big cat. Today, got a little bit of breaking news, breaking news. Brady Christensen will and must and should be your starting left tackle. We're going to look at some film today because... Just because you look at film doesn't mean you know what you're talking about. <laughs> Just because you look at film doesn't make you right. <laughs> what? Film lie. I could just talk about it. I don't have to do a video. <laughs> if I talk about it, does that mean I'm still right? <laughs> We're going to do some film study, y'all, on Brady Christensen and what I've seen and why you guys should be optimistic at him being your starting left tackle, all right? Let's talk about it. Let's get into it. Yeah. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, click that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Head over to Twitter for the latest up-to-date Carolina Panthers content and real time to reaction to breaking news and other stories. And also, if you have a question for the Big Cat, at me at KeepPounder underscore TV. Add the hashtag AskTheBigCat. And last but not least, get in that cash app, baby. Show that love, man. Anything you donate would be greatly appreciated. Now, again, we're doing film study today. It's not like it doesn't matter or like it matters. <laughs> It's not like you have to understand what you're watching. It's not that you have to interpret what you're watching. It's not like I can just sit up here and just talk about it. <laughs> Silly shit. Anyway, y'all, we got film study going on today. Let me tell you why you should be optimistic when it comes to Brady Christensen, y'all. Brady Christensen only started at left tackle three times last year. He started in week seven and week 16, week 18. Twice against Tampa Bay Buccaneers and twice against the New Orleans Saints who both teams have a, a nice uh, front front four, front seven, you know what I mean? So with that being said, I mean, that's a hell of a competition to start off your rookie campaign with at left tackle. According to ProFootballFocus.com, Brady Christensen was better than Cam Irvin and Dennis Daly when it came to the, the position, all right? Overall, between run blocking and pass blocking, Christensen graded out as a 62.4, all right? Irvin graded out at 56.0, and Dennis Daly grayed out as a 51.9. So not bad for a rookie who only played, uh, who only started three times at that position, man. I want you to keep that in mind, y'all. He's a rookie here. And he only played 40, 42% of the offense. He graded out at 62.4 on 42% of the offensive snaps, man. Not bad here. One thing I like about his, uh, Brady Christensen, one thing you're going to like about him is He's extremely athletic. For a guy who's 6'4", 300 plus pounds, he can move with the best of them. He can get in the best position, all right? Now, the knock against him is he's not that powerful, all right? He's not that strong, so he has to overcompensate with his athleticism at times, which can get him into trouble. He frequently gets beat by swim moves. He has trouble against guys that bull rush him. He also has trouble against guys who spin, do dip and rip, and push and pull moves against him faster guys, all right? He tries to overcompensate because he's not that strong, y'all. When In the run game, when it comes to run blocking, at times he can overshoot his target, causing him to be off balance. He can tend to, he tend to get there. He just be off balance. Once he get there, he end up falling on the ground, falling all over the place there, man. So he definitely has to bring his feet. Learn how to play under control. It doesn't matter how, how fast you get there. If you're not under control, you can't be an impact blocker. When it comes to the passing game, again, he overleans into his pass blocking, and he doesn't go through his proper technique when it comes to his kick steps. When the faster guys get on him, you know what I mean? He try, he tries to muscle them at, at the line of scrimmage instead of going through his technique. If you if you put yourself in the proper position, I don't care how fast or strong a guy is, if you can meet him there, you got half a chance. But if you're if you're hopping, if you're catching, if you're not doing your proper kickback, your proper steps, if you're over leaning into blocks. You take yourself out of the play before he even begins. And this is some of the things you see with him. Not to rag on him or give him a hard time, but these are some challenges you're going to overcome. But we're going to look at some film here. We're going to see some of the good, some of the bad with him. But ultimately, I think the decision to stay with Brady Christensen at left tackle could be a crucial one for the 2022 campaign. Let's get into this film study, y'all. One of my favorite things I love about Brady Christensen is his athleticism. He's not going to be known for his power, but his athleticism put him in plays to make big plays. On this play right here, you're going to see a play-action rollout. You're asking him to do three things. You're asking him to give you time to fake the ball to your running back. 
You're asking to give your quarterback time to go through his progression. And then you're asking your tackle to give me time to potentially take off or throw the ball away. All three things. He gets beat on his play, but his athleticism allowed him to recover smoothly and also for Sam Darnold to get out of the pocket and make the play. This is something that he struggled with when it comes to powerful defenders. They, he tends to get beat with swim moves. He also gets beat with push and pull moves because he's not that strong, like I said. But even though he was beaten on his play, his athleticism allowed him to make a smooth recovery, give him just enough time to uh, allow Sam Donald to escape out the pocket. And this is something that you would love to see in your athletic left tackle. On this next play, what you're going to see is Brady Christensen just going up against a straight bull rush. And he holds in there, man. I mean, he's not a, known as a powerful blocker. He's more of an athletic blocker. Um, I recommend this summer, man, or this offseason, he needs to hit that weight room big time. But despite that, man, he hangs in there. He gives it what he got. Man, he's, he's not a quitter. He's actually very tenacious when it comes to hanging in there, man. At the last second on this block, you're going to see him fall apart and the falling down. But he hung in there and just to give enough time for Sam Dorner to get the pass off, man. Something like I said, you know, not to pick on him. He got to get stronger up top. You know what I mean? And, and in his lower body as well. But he's a tenacious blocker. Definitely has the heart to hang in there and at least give your quarterback a chance. This next play, this is one of my highlights of the year for Brady Christensen. Good play call, good execution. Brady Christensen releases upfield as if he's going to climb to the next level to block a linebacker. Look at this. This is not an easy play. He's athletic enough to peel back and get just enough on this linebacker and end up allowing his running back to scout into the end zone free. That's his athleticism, y'all. This is a 6'4", 300-pound man, <laughs> okay? Peeling back as if he were, uh, 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 you know, fullback or something. I mean, he's athletic as shit, man. Um, this this actually makes me happy. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, if you don't like to see your left tackle when it comes to athleticism, you know, awareness, great play design, great scheme, I mean, he just got enough of them to pop him back out of the way so his running back can get free. That's who he is. He's athletic, talented, big man that definitely can make plays for you. On this play, you're going to really see where his strength comes into question here. Again, he's more of an athletic tackle here. And on this play, they're trying to sell the play action run. All right. But what happens is he overcompensates by leaning too far into his block. He's frequently beat by push and pull moves. He's frequently beat by swim moves as well. And that's what happened when you're weak. I mean, I don't necessarily want to call him weak, but I guess, you know, he for his position, he's weak, all right? He has to get in the weight room, beef this thing up. You don't have to overcompensate by leaning into your blocks. If you can, you can cheat a little bit. You can cheat off your block and anticipate the pass rush, you know what I mean, if you're strong enough. If you're not strong enough, you want to make sure you can get a nice aggressive push on there, but not at the, not at the risk of, overselling your block to where I can get you off balance with a swim move or a push and pull move. He has to get stronger. He has to get bigger and he has to be able to stay on balance because these guys are going to take advantage of him, which they frequently do. On this play, you're going to see more athleticism from Brady Christensen. He actually undersets on this play. And the reason why he underset is because he doesn't want to get beat on a spin move, all right? If you overset, you can get beat on that spin move. If you underset, if you're facing a powerful defender, they can just simply push you in to the quarterback. But on this play, it works out for him, even though he's off balance. Again, he's athletic enough to power up when he does try to when a defender does try to apply the spin move and he catches them. This is the athleticism I'm telling you guys about. Either you have it or you don't. Sometimes with left tackles, you even get really, really strong left tackles, but they have feet made out of bricks, or you get a really, really athletic tackle who's not really that strong. And that's what Brady Christensen is, man. But he has enough strength to get the job done. Um, you kind of want a mix of both, man. But um, he's, he's, his, his talent is predicated on his uh, athleticism. If we just get a little power out of this guy, you're looking at a lifelong or career-long uh, offensive tackle for the Panthers, man. But this right here is another um, confirmation that, you know, you really should like Brady Christensen being your starting left tackle. Guess what I got for you on this play? More athleticism from Brady Christensen. Again, this is a run block from the tackle position. He climbs to the next level. A little bit out of control here, man. But he, again, his athleticism allowed for him to turn around and get in position to make a key block that allowed for Chuba Hubert to stiff arm his way into the end zone. 
Again, there are times and when you look at the tape, he's out of control. I mean, he's he flying all over the place. But the effort's there. <laughs> you got to give him an A for effort. And these are some, some things you, you, know, you want to see him clean up here. But he was able to get back under control and make an impact play to spring his running back to the next level, man. So it's not always pretty with Brady Christensen, but the effort is definitely there. If we can get him to control himself, on, on, especially during the run block, and we can get him to be a little stronger, the athleticism is there for him to make big plays. This is your Mines and the Carolina Panthers starting left tackle for the 2022 season. You guys should be excited. All right, I got some more bad Brady Christensen for you. Again, because of his lack of power on this play, he's hopping and he's catching. He doesn't even go through his his drop his kick back step progression. He hops and catch because he's anticipating a bull rush. He wants to try to be able to power up with this guy, but this guy simply just does a dip and a rip right under him. Because he doesn't go through his technique and properly kick him back, now you're leaning over and you're reaching. Should have got called for holding, but he doesn't. Bring your feet. Go through your technique here. Go through your damn technique and you'll be in good position. This is what happens when you don't trust your technique. You don't have the power. You're hopping and catching. Like a lot of you guys, mom, this is this is a perfect example. Hopping and catching. This is what happens on their knees. But at the end of the day, you know, Brady Christensen has to bring his feet. He has to get stronger. He definitely has to trust his technique here. If not, you'll see a lot of this. And what you did see in this game, the, the Saints have a better edge rusher team than most in the NFL. And he did a lot of hopping, a lot of catching, a lot of overreaching because he doesn't trust his technique. And it ended up leading into him, you know, being abused pretty much. So bring your feet, trust your technique. You got to get stronger, prevent things like this. On this next play, you're going to see where Brady Christensen simply just get bull rushed. This is, I'm stronger than you, and you're not stronger than me. But you know what? Even though he, he got bent backwards, he chose to fight, man. Um, but he has to get stronger, y'all. You know what I mean? He's very tenacious, though. Very tenacious. He's not going to quit, not give up here. Should have got caught for a holding at the end of that, but didn't get called. Um, so I got to give him, I gotta give him credit for the fight, man. But when you're going up against guys that, you know, a power rushers, that's one of his weaknesses too, man. I mean, he just simply gets on here. And um, but uh I give him credit for fighting, man. That, that's what I will say about it. But uh you can tell at times it can be his weakness when he's going up against a power rusher. On this play, you're gonna see where Brady Christensen starts off in good technique, and then he pretty much allows for his fear of getting beat to turn into poor technique and him launching at a def defensive end. You have a running back right there to help you out. There's no need for you to be launching at anything coming off the edge. Use your technique, trust your technique, and power up at the last moment, all right? Set, set, set at the last moment, power up. And again, he gets beat with a swim over technique. You put your hands out, defense hands are taught to knock it down. I mean, the fear, you can smell the fear coming off this tape. You got your running back right there. If you're, half the battle is being in the position. Get in the right damn position, and you'll have an opportunity. All right, and if you do get beat at the last second, you got Amir Abdullah right there as well, which he's not going to stop, you know, number 92, but at least he can help chip out there. But you got to do your part. You got to be in the right technique and trust that you got help beside you. On this play, Brady Christensen finally learns his lesson, and he brings his feet and trusts his technique. And this time he's in a great position when DeMario Davis tries to underneath him, tries to rush underneath him, and he tries to hit a spin move at the last second. Because he's in good position, because he trusts his technique, he's able to find himself not getting beat and give Sam Darnold a chance to make a play. This is the good thing. If he can do this consistently, man, and this just comes with time, this comes with more reps, then he's going to be an all right offensive tackle. Mind you, this guy only played in three games where he started at left tackle here, but he shows you he has the athleticism to make plays at that position. We just got to get him some more strength. And we definitely had to get him some more consistency. But I think he has a bright future ahead of him. I hope you guys were able to learn something about this film study today when it comes to left tackle Brady Christensen. My final thoughts is this. I, I wouldn't be mad if they took a left tackle through the draft, all right? You know what I mean? Because I don't know. You can't teach strength. Either you have it or you don't. My first course of action would be get Brady Christensen stronger. Hit that weight room. I, mean, I don't know if you got to get on creatine, protein, or whatever you need to do. We got to get him stronger here. 
but he has the talent. He ha he's athletic enough to get in a position to be there. He has to be able to trust his technique, man. I I'm not really, I'm not ready to rule him out because we only seen him 42% of the snaps. You know what I mean? You haven't seen him 100% of the snaps. So again, I, I I'm a, I'm a, when it comes to learning, I'm more of a hands-on kind of guy. You put me in there, the more reps I get, the better I become at it. So I would like to think Brady Christensen could be that kind of guy, but we will never know until we see. But if I had to go with an insurance policy, I'm going through the draft to get probably a stronger tackle, maybe a stronger and, and possibly, you know, maybe less athletic, but he still has some power to go with it because you definitely have to power up against some of these guys. But I'm not ready to rule off Brady Christensen. He's, he's definitely not a project, you know what I mean? He just has to work on it, man. I'm willing to bet. If I had, if I was a betting man, I'm willing to bet the more reps he get, he's going to be better at it, y'all. I'm your host, Grande Gato, also known as the Big Cap. My cookie, put your paws up. If you're rocking with the Big Cap, tell me what you guys think, man. Shout out to Ray Pat Bone, man. I made this tape for you, baby. Listen, y'all, if you love the Big Cat, you love Keep Pounding TV, uh, the reason why I don't do film breakdown is because they're going to hit me with a copyright claim. Yeah, they're going to hit me with a copyright claim for this. But I believe this is a critical lesson for you guys to understand the game of football when it comes to the left tackle position. So anything you donate in that cash app, I greatly appreciate it. And if you guys are able to donate consistently, I'll do these videos and just eat the copyright claim, all right? So that's one of the reasons why I don't do it, because I can't do it, is because they're going to hit me with a claim. But uh, ultimately, do you feel like he's the answer at left tackle? Do you feel like he needs to be at guard? Do you think we need to get Teron Armstead? Do you think we need to draft another left tackle here? There's no wrong answer, man. We all got different opinions, different perspective. It's not like we can look at film and it matters. It's not like you can sit up and just talk about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, who needs film study? You know what I mean? Doesn't make me right unless I got film. <laughs> Sucker shit. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I'm trolling right now. Don't worry about it, man. Get in the comment section. Make sure you hit that cash. I show that love, man. I greatly appreciate it. Also, head over to Twitter. Follow me at KeepPounding underscore TV for the latest Carolina Panthers content, up-to-date reaction as well. Also, if you got a question for the Big Cat, at me at KeepPounding underscore TV. Hashtag Ask the Big Cat. Show that love in that cash app. Make sure you subscribe, follow as well. Let's get up out of here, y'all. Let the church say. Let the church say. Pause up. Keep pounding. Carolina on top. Forever, baby. Thank you guys for watching Keep Pounding TV. I got one quick question. Do. Scream, scream, scream. You. You can't stop me. You can't stop me. Fumble. Love the Carolina Panthers. We did it. We did it. We did it. Like I love the Carolina Panthers. Ah!